<clears throat> Singer. Michael, to hold them to 43 points in the second half, how encouraging was that defensive effort you saw? Yeah, I thought it was great. You know, you uh, you mentioned the second half. I thought the first quarter was great as well. The uh, second quarter, obviously, was the one quarter where it wasn't uh, quite where it needed to be. But uh, second half was tremendous. And I really felt the key stretch was end of the third quarter, start of the fourth quarter. We went on a 20 to four run with uh, our whole bench in the game. And I, and I thought those guys played just terrific on both ends. Uh, to, to, to close a quarter like that and to start the fourth off like that, that was uh, tremendous. The other really important stat I think is in that first half, we turned the ball over quite a bit. Uh, in that second half, we had 14 assists, only one turnover, which is really important against that team because when you turn the ball over, that just fuels that break. And we saw that last time we played them uh, a few games ago. So a uh, great defensive effort. You know, that team is tired. That's the, I think, the seventh game in 11 days on a really long road trip. But overall, I thought our defense was, uh, was on point tonight. Nick Lombardi. Coach, uh, I think we're seeing the maturation of uh, Michael Porter's game every night offensively as well. How about that move he had on Jaron Jackson, where he bullied him a couple times before he went up for the bucket? We haven't seen that often out of him. Yeah, I mean, it's um, – I love when, when Michael's aggressive, Vic, and he's not just settling for jump shots. We know how pretty that jump shot is, how effective that jump shot is. But uh, when he can go to the basket, he's got terrific size and length, and, uh, and he works all the time on his body. So to use that uh, strength – uh, to, to get a big off him is really fun to watch. Uh, the, the area I think Mike was really grown in, though, is uh, and maybe it's helped now because he knows without Jamal, without Will, uh, the ball's going to find him. So he's not rushing shots. He's not forcing shots, I think, like he was doing earlier in the season. He's passing. He's cutting. If he doesn't have the shot, he's going to hit Nicola and cut, and he's getting easy baskets that way as well. Um, so, yeah, Michael, 31-7 and seven tonight. Uh, and uh, he did it in a very efficient manner. Brandon Cristal. Yeah, Coach, you guys are 6-1 and one since you lost Jamal, and you're getting contributions from a, a lot of guys. You mentioned the bench. Just how, how nice is that, that everyone is kind of doing their part to, to step up and fill that void, plus obviously with, you know, Will and Monte out too? Yeah, it's, um, it's great to see, and obviously more importantly, it's, it's necessary. You know, when you lose, you know, 44 points, 11 assists and 10 rebounds out of the Jamal Murray, Will Barton, Monte Morris um, group that's out, it's not on one guy. And, and I thought tonight was another example where you had contributions from everybody. I think almost every night, you know, what you're going to get from Nicola and Michael Porter. Now, you know, I wasn't expecting PJ, PJ Doji to go out and get another career high, but other guys stepped up and um, we're going to need that these next 11 games. Uh, this is a collective effort. And when you have guys out, key guys out, that's what you need. You need everybody stepping up and bringing their best. Ryan Blackburn. Coach, tonight it, it felt like we saw a concerted effort from uh, Michael Porter and Aaron Gordon to cut late off of passes from Nicole Jokic. What, how would you evaluate just how they've responded over these last few games, cutting more? And, and what do you think has led to that? Well, I, I think, you know, we have a top three offense in the NBA and we have an MVP candidate who is the best passer in the NBA. So you would be wise to pass the ball to him and cut. And if you don't get it early, finish your cut because you're going to get it late. And guys that understand that get layups, they get high percentage shots. Uh, and we as a team are at our best when the ball is moving from side to side. Uh, two games ago in Golden State, we were very stagnant. The ball didn't move, bodies didn't move, and we were really easy to guard. I feel these last two games are getting back to playing more our brand of basketball, which is pass, cut, and that's why I think we're a fun team to watch because we're not a team that comes down and has isolation plays and we dribble the air out of the ball. You know, and uh, it, it's the right way to play the game, and I think when our guys really commit to it, we become a, a team that's really hard to guard on a consistent basis. Esteban Abed. Hi, coach. Congrats for the win. Um, 
about the about Faku defense. What sensation does it cause to you? See him night after night increase increase uh, his intensity of defense. Uh, go fighting to the uh, to pivot and, and get rebounds. Yeah, it's um, you know I talked earlier uh, Esteban about how every night I know what I'm going to get from Nicola and Michael. And I can say the same thing about Facundo Campazzo because every night, you know, he's going to go out there and leave it all out there. He, he doesn't pace himself. He doesn't save himself. He goes all out. And that's why I think he has the respect of his teammates, his coaches, but also players around the league because they see how hard he plays, never takes a possession off. Uh, he's constantly into guys. He takes that challenge. He has a lot of pride on the defensive end. Uh, the other thing that's really impressive, I think last two games, he has 21 assists, only two turnovers. So what do you want from your point guard? You want a point guard that's going to run his team, make his teammates better, and value the ball at a high level. And Faku, the last two games, has done that extremely well, uh, which is important. Uh, I just, for me, I couldn't be prouder of a team and a group. I know that with all these injuries that we've had, People outside of that group have said that, well, this team is done, their season's over, they got no chance, uh, which is understandable. But when you know this team and you're around them every day, um, I love all these guys. I really do. These guys bring it every night. Um, they continue to fight. They continue to believe in themselves and, more importantly, believe in each other. And, uh, and I'm excited about these next 11 games uh, and where we can go. All right, coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Joel Rush. Hey, coach, uh, Shaq Harrison is on the two-way contract, and he's played less than 100 minutes for you guys. But uh, you trust him to go out there and guard John Morant. What does that say about him as a player? Yeah, I mean, like, he was a guy that I was excited to sign. I really was. I mean, uh, having coached against him in the past, his body of work, uh, he's a guy that's got over close to 130 NBA games um, in his career. And one thing I know about Shaq is that I don't know if he's going to make the corner three or not, but I know he's going to compete and he's going to guard. Uh, and when you have guys like Faku, Shaq, Austin, PJ going out there and fighting and competing and scrapping on the defensive end, you give yourselves a chance. So, uh, you know, Shaq was great tonight. I mean, I thought, you know, he, he got to the basket for an end one. He had four rebounds and, you know, just trying to tag team Ja Morant. Ja's a great player. And you need guys that, you know, are willing to take on that challenge to try to guard him. And I thought Faku and Shaq did a really good job of that tonight. All right, that'll do it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.